So this presentation is going to detail uh, the importance of DP command terms. It's going to break down a couple of the levels of the command terms, and it's going to identify what to do in certain situations. Um, so how important are the IBDP command terms? Um, in IB, the command terms, especially in DP, are crucial. They're incredibly important. Um, on the IB exams, the identification and correct usage of the command terms is vital. And if you don't do it effectively, you're going to be marked down. Um, typically, examiners are going to focus on whether or not you're accu accurately using the command term. Um, this is what is referred to as meeting or the uh, meeting the demands of the questions. Um, specifically, if it says that you need to justify and you're not justifying, then you're going to get marked down. So, um, being able to identify them and to have some knowledge to some degree as to what you need to do for each one is very important. Um, so there are increasing levels of difficulty in terms of what is required of the command terms. There are lower level command terms. Um, this would be, if it was a pyramid, it would be the bottom bottom area of the pyramid. Um, these terms require you to comprehend the meaning of information um, and use it to a smaller degree. Uh, lower level terms arrange from answers. Uh, the range could be wider uh, and specificity isn't uh, too focused. Uh, the words typically are define, describe, identify, outline, uh, and these are the base command terms. You'll see these uh, more so with uh, paper one, question one. Um, they are simple you know, recall information. As you move up in terms of complexity, um, you're going to find that you're going to have to do more for the second level. So assessment objective two command terms. Uh, they require students to use the knowledge and explain actual situations, break down ideas into simpler parts, and see how these parts relate to one another. Um, they require more knowledge and work to complete. Uh, they're harder than AO1, but not quite in AO3. Um, analyze, distinguish, explain, suggest. You're going to need to focus more and give more of uh, reasoning as to why you're going to uh, provide certain answers. As we get to the top level, these are the highest level command terms, um, and they require you to rearrange components of ideas, make a whole new uh, judgment uh, based on evidence or a set of criteria. It, it, they're more complex in terms of what you need to do. They need deep thought, reflection, um, and you need to definitely explain your ideas further you need to provide level of depth with these. There are compare, compare, contrast, contrast on its own, uh, discuss, evaluate, examine, justify, to what extent. Um, and then what I had you do is I had you go through and maybe identify a few key words within each definition that might help you out. Um, you can review these on your own. Um, you can press pause if you would like just to, to read them. And then what I did was I tried giving you a bad example that might help you understand the command term a little bit better. The example that I, I gave, the sample claim, was that Harry Potter has had a significant impact in developing a love of reading in children. That's the claim. That's the idea. That's the argument. And I'm going to utilize this claim with the various command terms to help you understand maybe what you need to do for each command term. So um, the first is assessment objective two command term, analyze uh, IB definitions to break down in order to bring out the essential elements or structure. And reworded, what that means is you need to take a detailed look at the claims elements or structure of itself. Uh, what is the question? Uh, what about it do we need to focus on in order to understand it a little bit more? Uh, I always imagine analyze as like looking at something with a magnifying glass. Um, a sample analysis question for the claim that we have, our bad example, would be analyze the significance that the book, Harry, the book series Harry Potter has had in developing a love of reading in children. So it actually identifies you're anal analyzing the significance. That's, that's the key. So if you're reviewing this um, sample question, sample analysis points that you can start focusing on um, what about the book series demonstrates significance? The key is we're looking at this claim and we have identified significance, and that's one of the major ideas, like with one of the major focal points of this whole entire question. 
Um, so what does significance really mean? And, and whenever you're analyzing it, you're questioning, does this series truly meet this criteria? Does it really demonstrate significance? Um, I'm sorry. Then how do, how do child readers show appreciation or love of reading? That's something else you might want to analyze. Uh, has Harry Potter really achieved the qualifying term of love? Um, so it's more so looking, taking a detailed look at the elements of the structure of it, uh, the claim itself. A discussion is assessment objective three command term, so it's one of those higher level command terms. Um, IB definition offer a considered and balanced review. That includes a range of arguments, factors, or hypotheses. Opinions and conclusions should be presented clearly and supported by appropriate evidence. Uh, rewarded, uh, provide a balanced review of a, of a claim. There should be clear support for each point that you make. Um, are there any concepts or ideas that can be focused on relating to the claim or question? If there are, you need to talk about them in depth. Uh, discuss allows you to provide multiple perspectives, which you should be doing. A uh, sample discussion question would be, Harry Potter has had a significant impact of developing a love of reading children. Discuss this claim. It's very broad, but it's like, hey, you're going to discuss this idea. So sample discussion points. Um, discuss could be kind of um, very broad in terms of what you're discussing. Um, for example, Harry Potter has impact, impacted a whole generation of child readers through its positive messages. So I'm going to discuss that idea, and I'm going to provide evidence and, and support for that one idea. And then I'm going to provide a different discuss point, which would be the impact is not felt by all. Some find it to be blasphemous and anti-religious. So I'm going to provide evidence and support for that position as well. That's another discussion point. And then thirdly, I'm going to provide another discussion point, which would be some say that there was a love of read, reading prior to this series coming out. And that H.K. Rowling capitalized on the search and interest. That would be a further discussion point. And on a paper, I'm going to utilize all three of these effective points for my discussion. So if you see, I'm providing multiple perspectives, and I'm trying to give balance by giving positive messages, a more of a negative uh, point of that, and then having a whole other argument that might, have, might not have positive or negative consequences, but is another interpretation of the, the question itself. Um, so suggest assessment objective two to propose a, a solution, hypothesis, or possible answer, rewarded, propose answer or claim. I don't know how you can get more specific than that. Sample suggestion would be suggest why Harry Potter has had a significant impact of developing a love of reading in children. Uh, sample suggestion points. Uh, children have not had a significant, uh, have not had a Children have not had any significant books which connected with them on a personal level in many years. That's one possible solution. Um, another one would be the fantastical nature of the series draws children into reading them. Uh, I've provided possible answers. I'm suggesting answers. And you know that's pretty basic, but I'm also giving well thought out in depth uh, responses. And that's what a suggest would be. Uh, it's justifies assessment objective three. Uh, it's one of those deeper ones, give valid reasons or evidence to support an answer or conclusion. And rewarded, what a justify is, is supporting the claim that has been presented to you. You need to offer strong evidence to support this idea. Even if, and remember, even if you don't fully agree with it, you need to focus on justifying the idea. That's the key. A sample justification would be justify why Harry Potter has had a significant impact of developing a love of reading in children. Um, my sample justification point that I would make, even if I don't agree with this, I'm trying to justify it. I'm going to give a valid reason, and I'm going to try and provide sufficient evidence for that answer. Um, the book series capitalized on a generation's desire to have more heroes they can look up to. There was a severe lack in protag protagonist characters in the lead-up to Harry, the Harry Potter series. Many schools used older literature, such as To Kill a Mockingbird, year after year, and the fresh story of Harry Potter connected with children on a more modern level. So I've provided a reason, and I'm justifying why that reason needs is a, an appropriate answer. So it's it's providing your answer, but then providing a certain level of depth in response to that as well. And for justification, you're going to offer more than one, but that's a sample justification point. 
Um, examine. Uh, examine is an assessment objective three. You consider an argument or concept in a way that uncovers the assumptions and interrelationships of the issue. Rewarded, what the heck does that mean? Consider an argument or a claim. Uncover the assumptions and interrelationships. Uh, it's, it's like a more critical analysis, which focuses on the argument in a way that's going to uncover more interrelationships connected to this concept. Um, check out the sample. Uh, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, sample question, examine the, cl the claim that Harry Potter has had a significant impact on developing the love of children and children. Sample examination points would be that the series strives to develop the psyche of the child into one that makes the connection of reading to, a, to the pleasure receptors within the brain. This development can be observed when the child seeks out further books to read in the series. This development can also be observed when they start engaging in further discussion of the series to their peers. Um, so what I've done here, I've, I've taken a critical look, a very critical look at what uh, relationships and uh, kind of assumptions can be made about this claim. Um, it's very, very detailed. Um, imagine, so if Analyze is looking at something with a magnifying glass, imagine an examiner would be looking at something with um, you know, a microscope, like really getting in there and trying to really understand everything about it. Um, evaluate assessment objective three. Um, we see evaluate quite a bit. It's to make appraisal by weighing up the strengths and limitations of an argument. Um, rewarded for us is to appraise a claim by weighing the strengths and weaknesses, review and identify the validity of a claim based on the arguments for and against it. Um, evaluate the claim that Harry Potter has had a significant impact of developing a love of reading in children. Sample I'm sorry, that should be sample evaluation points. So it's not examination, it's evaluation. Um, the strength of the claim relies on the fact that there are there is hard evidence that there that at times the series that the oh, I'm gonna start over. The strength of the claim relies on the fact that there is hard evidence that at the time the series came out, more children started reading. However, the claim is limited due to the fact that there were many book series coming out at the time. One can't make the assumption that only Harry Potter developed the love of reading. So I've evaluated this argument. I've given a strength to the point, but I've also kind of like identified a weakness to it. Um, using words like however or on the balance really kind of help out a lot whenever you do an evaluation. Uh, to what extent? To what extent is um, one that I, I have seen a lot in IB. Uh, it's also an assessment objective three command term, very deep. Consider the merits or otherwise of an argument or concept. Opinions and conclusions should be stated and presented clearly and supported with appropriate evidence and sound argument. Um, so rewarded. On what level does this claim have worth? We're kind of like judging the worth of the argument itself, the merit of it. Can you provide the degree at which you agree or disagree with the claim? Because typically what you're gonna see is Harry Potter has had a significant impact of developing a love for reading in children to what extent do you agree with the claim? So usually I've seen to what extent you agree. So sample to what extent points. On a basic level, this claim has worth. This is supported by the fact that ever since Harry Potter came out, there was an explosion of young adult literature. So I've provided evidence and I'm giving my reasoning as to why I agree with the claim. Or I could perhaps not agree with the claim. I would say this claim is disagreeable due to the fact that it is based around an assumption which generalizes all children into one category, which are children that love to read fantasy novels. So it's a very um, generalized term, like the claim is very generalized. So you can make arguments against that. <clears throat> um, the last thing I want to talk about counterclaims or multiple perspectives. Um, in this course, in, in written IB exams, you're going to be asked to focus on offering a counterclaim or by offering multiple perspectives. They're, these are two very similar yet two very different ideas. Uh, counterclaims are alternative ways of looking at a primary claim. These ideas could be as simple as identifying the complete opposite of the main claim, but an hour a counterclaim doesn't need to be an opposite. It can, it's totally acceptable to, be, uh, to identify what would be considered the gray area. That means you can offer a modification of the claim, which changes how we look at it. And it's not always diametrically opposed to the idea. It could be an alternative. Sample counterclaim to our horrible, bad original claim. 
Uh, so the main claim is Harry Potter has had a significant impact on developing a love of reading in children. Counterclaim could be that Harry Potter hasn't had a significant impact on developing a love of reading in children. Or, the gray area, the impact that the book series has had has been less than initially interpreted. It actually has had a more subtle impact. So that could be a counter argument, a counter claim. It's not the direct claim, but it is a counter to that claim. It's another interpretation of it. So um, on your paper, you would need to explain and provide reasoning why. How are the limitations of an argument different from a counterclaim? <clears throat> this is where things get a little complicated. If you're doing an evaluation, sometimes things are a little not quite as straightforward. Please note that pointing out the limitations of an argument still focus around the main idea, still focus around the main claim. You might touch upon ideas that work appropriately for a counterclaim, but you're still on the major art ideas and arguments of the original claim. When you offer up a counterclaim, it should be a whole new argumentative point that offer that counters the original claim or provides a different interpretation. So limitations still focus on that main argument. Counterclaim is based around a whole new argument, but there could be some kind of overlap in a way. An example of this. Uh, the claim is, a warm classroom best facilitates student learning. The limitation is that some students struggle more when the temperature is raised. Um, it causes tiredness in class. The counterclaim, though, is that a colder classroom is be the best thing that facilitates student learning. And if you can kind of see, there is a little bit of overlap because maybe these students actually benefit more off of a colder classroom. But this limitation still focuses primarily around this main claim. Counterclaim is on its own. Um, and that's kind of where we finished. Uh, I had you guys do group activity work. If you have any questions about command terms, uh, you should come and ask. Discuss with your classmates or come to the teacher. Um, they are very important. And at the end of year two, you're going to be doing those externally moder moderated exams that are going to use the, or the, use the command terms. And if you don't understand what they mean, that's going to be... Um, an issue with your grading. So um, hopefully this helps out. Good luck on your assessments.